Hi, Scott Moyes here from Capra Systems in New Zealand. In the last video we took this part which had been bored out on the lathe and then roughed out the remainder of the stock on the 3 axis mill. But we haven't done any finishing strategies yet and this um, particular part has some challenges around edge selections because these particular flanges don't come all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom of the part. So all the edges are completely self-contained, so that there's no continuous loop which can be created by selecting edges. For these types of parts, the HSM Works team have provided the Create Silhouette tool. To use it, all you have to do is specify the model you want to create the silhouette of, and then the sketch plane. Bearing in mind that when you use a 2D contour, the selections you make, in this case would be the sketch, the height of the tool is set to that selection so it will cut as deep as the sketch by default. If we have a look at this model we can try and figure out whether or not there's an optimal plane to select for the sketch. I actually want to come about one mil past the bottom of this edge here so there really isn't much gain to be had by selecting any specific point so I'm just going to select this one here and create the silhouette sketch. Now what it's actually doing is flattening the model in plan view along the Z as defined in the setup. So it's also included the holes which we don't want. So we need to come in and edit the sketch and just delete these holes out so that when we select the sketch from the browser it's not going to apply toolpaths to all of these holes as well. We can turn the visibility of that sketch off now it doesn't need to be on to select it when we're applying our 2D contour. So with that, supply some toolpaths, select our 16mm flat, so remember that from the last operation, and what do we want to select? Well, we want to select that sketch, and we need to make sure that the contour is going to be set to the outside, not the inside. So make sure this arrow is on the outside of this particular sketch, Okay, so now we can move on to the Heights tab, and this is where I want to specify that I want to cut one mil, pa one mil past the bottom of this filleted um, feature here. So select from selection for the bottom height, and then go an additional minus one mils past that point. Now on the Passes tab, I want to set a five mil finishing overlap here. I just make sure that the where the tool starts and where the tool ends on the contour actually overlaps and doesn't leave any witness marks on the finished face of the part. And I'm happy with the rest of these settings. I'm going to leave the links and the leads as default and the toolpath gets generated. And here we can see that overlap. And we can confirm that we're cutting one mil past that point. So that's perfect. All right. Next, I want to come come around and finish off these vertical walls here. Since we've cut all of these flange faces and the sections of this particular cylindrical face in between the flanges. So now I want to clean up these faces here. Okay. So using 2D contour again, we're going to use the same tool, but this time we're going to select open contours. So we need to make sure we turn off propagate along Z, otherwise it's going to continue all the way around each contour loop. So turn off propagate along Z. And the, the end of the edge chain that you select is important. If we zoom in here and I select this edge, then as a starting point, it's going to start here, but it's going to use left compensation climb milling. So it's climb milling along this edge and starting here, so it's on the wrong side of the line, which means that you have to come in here and then click with that highlighted click reverse to reverse that direction and now you can see it's not actually propagating the edge at all so let's clear that selection out and select the edge at the opposite end it's still climb milling it's starting at this point so it's naturally coming along the left hand side of the line and it's propagating the chain right up to the point where it's, there's no tangent edge anymore so that's perfect we don't have to do a second operation to select the next line, we can just repeat the selection. Okay. So again I made sure I selected the right end of the of the edge chain. So now I've selected all of the edges that I need, I just want to configure some extension distances. 
the starting point is fine. I'm happy with that, where it, right where it is. But I'd actually like it to roll off the end here slightly. So I'm going to turn on separate tangential end extension and create a different one and have the tool come five mils past the end just to make sure it comes right off the edge of this part. I'm going to leave all of the other settings as default and accept that. So now we can see that the tool path is coming right the way around and making sure it finishes off and doesn't leave any kind of cusp on this particular edge here. And that's that. Next up is another 2D contour but this time I just want to cut around and finish off this surface here. Using the same tool I'm going to select this particular edge but again I need to change the height and I need to make it from selection and select this top face here so it's going to come around and cut as deep as this face which is the same as these two flanges here and I want to apply that 5mm overlap again. I'm going to leave the leads and links as default now we can see we've got the toolpath we need. And finally the last operation to finish off this side we've just got this fillet radius left to clear off so to do that I'm going to use 3D milling flow. I'm going to switch over to a different tool this time. We'll go over 10 mil ball mill. Now with the flow, the direction of the tool path is dependent on the UV lines or kind of like the, the mesh edges of this particular surface. So you can see here that the arrows are pointing all the way around. If I flip that then they're going across the surface instead of along and around the surface. Now the direction of this arrow is going to dictate the direction of the toolpath so I want it to flow all the way around. So keeping the selection as default and I'm going to come in and set 15 step overs and I'm going to keep all the rest of the settings as default and it's going to generate a toolpath which comes all the way around and surfaces off that fillet radius. So simulate that to finish and see what the result is everything's good and we've got the full shape defined just as we need it. So in the next video I'm going to go through and show how we toolpath the second side but I hope that's been helpful and a nice compliment to the first video and I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day. Bye.